Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 373. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leveraged streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast, and I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you're here today because we are going to have what I believe is going to be a very interesting discussion about technology and the role that it's playing in business, and more importantly, the intersection of technology and various different facets of, well, all of our lives. And I think it's amazing some of the things that technology can do. As you guys know, I'm a total Apple fanboy, and and we love technology, especially as it helps us do more, understand more, be able to accomplish more. And well, today's guest is none other than Yuval Moore. <laughs> well, here's my <laughs> point. Here's the point to understand, though, is that he's got experience in the startup world. He's got experience, enterprise experience. We've got international experience. And what I really love about entrepreneurs is how we can take varied experiences, bring them all together into one neatly packaged solution that actually solves problems in an uncommon fashion. And that's exactly what you and I are going to hear today. So if if you've ever wanted to think out of the box, I think what's going to happen for you today is you're going to get some inspiration on how you might be able to do that very same thing. So hopefully you're ready to take some notes to understand, to listen. And you know what? This is probably going to be one of those where you're going to need to listen to it multiple times. So let's get ready to understand the inner workings of the mind of Mr. Yuval more. You've all you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm glad that you are joining us. Thank you for your time. I, I totally appreciate that. Now, with you being here, this is this being your first time, I have to ask you the same question that I tend to ask everybody the first time that they are here. Are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. So I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes, you know, uh, Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, etc. And I think entrepreneurs and superheroes have a number of things in common. For example, we use our special skills and abilities to, in general, improve the quality of life of other people and those around us. However, just like entrepreneurs, uh, superheroes have a beginning. You know, if you think about some of the origin stories of people like Spider-Man, you know, he was just a college student taking photos, and then something happens to him, and he discovers that he has a superhero ability, and he has to go out there and use it uh, for good or for evil. Now, my question to you is, before your current company, Beyond Verbal, before the write-ups in Forbes and CIO and MIT Technology Review, before all of the great things that people know you for today, what we want to know is, who is Yuval Moore? So, uh, first of all, I want to thank you a lot and the, the audience for the opportunity to, uh, to participate. It's, uh, it's really an honor and, uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. So, thanks a lot for the, uh, for the opportunity. Um, and I guess this is a very interesting angle that uh, you are asking about, which um, I rarely get this question. And so when I look back, um, it's interesting to me, uh, for me to realize that uh, in a sense, I've probably been an entrepreneur from quite early, uh, early stage in my life. Mm. Um, I used to play uh, professional sport uh, when I was in, uh, in high school. And at some point when I was, I think, 16, I decided that I want to open a school for young kids to get into this uh, into this sport. 
And because it wasn't there, I opened uh, on my own, um, had the initiative to open uh, this uh, sports uh, school for kids, uh, you know, third and fourth grade. And I actually went around, uh, brought some quote unquote investors or people that contributed um, hmm. balls and shirts and we created our own league um, and I had to walk around between the different schools in my uh, in my city and really recruit these, uh, these kids. And it's one of the things that you are doing at an early stage very naively. You don't even know really what uh, <laughs> what you're going what you're going through. Um, and what's the, the purpose? And then suddenly, after about uh, three, four months, we had a fully operational uh, school for uh, four kids. Uh, they were practicing two times a week, and we had even a small league that uh, that we created, and we had about 50, uh, 50 of these kids. And we didn't know, I didn't know to call it entrepreneurship uh, back then, <laughs> uh, but I guess it was something thing that um, you know just had the had there in me so I was always interested in the the power of bringing ideas to fruition um, and and really enjoyed it so for me it was kind of uh, kind of natural um, I guess that's probably the interesting way to describe how it all started interesting and what sport was that uh, this is a sport that is much more common in in Europe and Asia, actually, then, then in the U.S., okay. uh, it's called the hand, handball, and it's okay. an Olympic, uh, Olympic sports, and somewhere between soccer and basketball, if you will. Very, very nice uh, game, which I used to play, um, not as known uh, in, in the U.S. as in Europe and Asia. Got it, got it. And just so that I heard you correctly, you started the school at age 16? Yes, this is all. Awesome. Yes, I know. <laughs> and and I'm telling you, it's one of the things you look back and you say, what was I thinking about, uh, you know, doing this and mm -hmm. and not doing, doing it as like an external uh, uh, thing and not as part of the team that I was uh, belonging to because I thought I want to keep my own independence. So, you know, and I'm looking back and I said, what really, what was I thinking at the age of 16? But yes, I did it for about two years then. Well, okay. And then I think that's, very in, an interesting thought is, yeah, what were you thinking? Because it, it doesn't sound like it was a profit motive as much as I want to maintain a, a, a particular type of lifestyle. It was definitely not a financial um, <laughs> motivation. Um, you know, when you take four and third and fourth graders uh, uh, into this uh, thing, you're doing it mostly for the love of what you do. And I think that if we want to think about uh, like a common thread between all the things I did, but I think in general, things that are common for all entrepreneurs is really the passion for what they do. And I think very rarely, if ever, the motivation is, uh, is financial. It's because you're passionate about what you're doing. It's because you want to change things that you, th you think that are not done right or there is a big opportunity or you can change people's lives. I, I really think the motivation for true entrepreneurs is actually a, a really financial one Yeah, to begin I, with. I, I agree with you 100%. Now, one of the things that you said you did during that process, though, is you said you you quote unquote, found investors. Now you didn't like take a class that said, this is how you find, find investors or, or get people to help you. You just, what did you do? Just start asking? Uh, so I had very specific needs. I wanted, I needed to have shirts, you know, like, so the kids, when they are coming to, to practice or when they go to, to play the game, uh, in the league, so they would have their own shirts, you know, with a logo and so on. And so it was very practical uh, uh, thing. So what I did is I went to talk with a few uh, store chains uh, in in my uh, area in my city, and I said, "Would you be interested to to sponsor this uh, this team?" And again, same, very very similar in a way with what you do with investors. You need to really find the people that can buy into your idea, can buy into your passion, into your enthusiasm, to the purpose of what you're doing it for. And you say, hey, join me for the ride. And they need to look you in the eyes and they need to see the passion in, in your eyes and they need to say, okay, we, we buy into it. 
And this is really, you know, now that we are talking about it, this is really a common thread of how you find, and in this case, it was sponsors, not investors, but it's it's very similar. Yeah, yeah, I I, I totally I, I totally get that. Now, wh- how? <laughs> so you, you, I want you to bridge the gap for us. How do you go from <laughs> handball to beyond verbal? That sounds like a really large gap. So uh, there, there's a story there. Um, so it's definitely, you know, this uh, thing goes back. I don't want to say how many dozens of years because that would, you know, like say <laughs> how, how old I am. But <laughs> but the, the getting to to beyond verbal was definitely a journey. Um, and, you know, in between, I got into the, the high-tech area. I was involved with uh, before Beyond Verbal as like a senior manager and also a CEO of one company before um, of, like I said, four early stage uh, companies, uh, one company that went public uh, in, uh, in NASDAQ and another three companies that were acquired. So in a sense, I almost see everything that I did until or before I, I started Beyond Verbal as really kind of leading the way and preparing me for this adventure, which is the most fascinating and exciting one I've been involved with. Um, so it has definitely been a journey and along the, the process, I really learned a lot. Um, and I also, you know, it's another, I think, important uh, trait for, for an entrepreneur. I learned the value of asking for advice. Mm-hmm. I learned the, the power of coming to people and say, hey, I want to seek your advice and actually meaning <laughs> meaning it. Because in a lot of cases, people come and say, yeah, I want to still ask your advice, but right. they actually want to tell you more what they think. And I realized that when you come to people and you ask for their advice, they would really open their heart. They would tell you about their experience, good things, bad things. Um, And it can really help you overcome a lot of challenges rather than doing it on your own. Um, Really get some advice from people that have been there before. So it's really, like you said, it's really a journey. Uh, But I felt that when I started uh, Beyond Verbal, I had a lot of experience to uh, to really go through all these uh, many of these challenges. Got it. Got it. Okay. So why why don't you uh, do do us a favor? Because a number of people are probably wondering what is Beyond Verbal. So Beyond Verbal is really a very interesting, okay, I guess it's part of, of a journey. So what Beyond Verbal does is we have a technology that has actually been in development for over 20 years now. And when we started Beyond Verbal, we started it only four, four and a half years ago. And the first thing we did is we acquired this technology and that really helped us get to the market much faster. And what the technology does is it listens, uh, it can listen to a speaker's voice, and we are only talking about the voice uh, intonation, the the music of the voice, if you will. We don't understand the words, we don't understand any of the meaning, we're just listening to the tone of voice, and we are trying to get as many insights as possible from the tone of voice. And these insights range from what is the emotional state of the person going through when you collect these emotions over time, what is the emotional wellness of the speaker? So something like uh, how is he doing this week versus the previous week, the previous months and so on. And all the way through being able to detect health conditions And again, only by focusing or by monitoring the tone of voice. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. I I just, I know someone is thinking the same thing and I've just got to ask. What you're saying is that you've taught a machine to be able to read or interpret nonverbal communication solely based on my, my own vocal intonation. When I'm talking, you know, in front of people, investors, partners, and so on, I always warn them that at the end of the meeting, I'm going to listen very carefully to say to what they say. And if they say, this is very interesting, or this is very interesting, 
you can see how the tone is really the thing that is giving the whole meaning to what people are saying. So the words are exactly the same, but the meaning <laughs> could, could be completely different just based on the, on the tone of voice. So the short answer is yes, this is exactly what, uh, what we were able to, to taught. Um, in a way, kind of imitating the, the, the way the human brain is working, uh, uh-huh. By interpreting these these uh, these signals that exist in the voice. Wow. Okay. Uh, that <laughs> you know what's funny is that I was recently at an event and the guy was giving an example from stage with the following sentence about how the the emphasis on words changes the meaning. The sentence he said was uh, it was. I didn't say you were beautiful. And then he said, I didn't say you were beautiful. And then he said, I didn't say you were beautiful. And what you're telling me is that your technology has the ability to pick up on those differences and, and, and tell us what it, what's really going on under the surface. That's interesting to say the least. Okay. So then. Yes. I'm- and. Oh, go ahead. And I just, I just want to to emphasize that um, you know it's not uh, the case that we can, you know, with this technology, detect all these nuances that uh, in the example that uh, that you gave. But really, to give machines, whether it's you know smart home devices or smart cars, um, or your mobile phone, the ability to really communicate and this is the real thing this is where this whole technology and artificial intelligence is going towards is to be able to really have a conversation with your home robot smart home devices cars and and so on and so forth so the device would be able to respond based on your current mood so if you come back uh, home and you're very tired you wouldn't want your robot to be like too cheerful. So you want the robot to be able to say, hey, I sense that you are a little bit tired. Should I put a relaxing music for you in your you know, audio, audio system? Or should I recommend to you like a very nice movie that you can sit in front of the, uh, of the TV and watch? So that's the kind of use cases that we would like to to get to and i think this is where the whole industry is going to okay then i i've i've got a whole <laughs> uh, I've, I've got a whole list of questions now so um but all right, but chief among them is how on okay i there's this moment in every entrepreneur's journey where they they have what i call that superhero moment it's where you realize hey i've got a special something here uh and i can share it with other people how on earth do you come to the realization that this beyond verbal is like something you can do and bring and help people's lives where does that come from um so I shouldn't be the one to get any credit for this I must be I must be honest really the guy that is behind all of this uh, technology is the guy that is our chief scientist his name is uh, Dr uh, Levanon um and he's one of these phenomenal crazy scientists Scientist that you know come up with all these crazy ideas many times uh, in his life that people are saying what and I'm actually more the one that is taking these ideas realizing their potential and help them to bring them to realization you know yeah. raise the money find the right partners and so on um, I guess for me um, one of these moments that uh, that you're talking about actually happened just a couple of months ago. Um, we have just uh, completed a research study that we were doing with the Mayo Clinic uh-huh. about the ability to detect heart problems just based on the tone of voice. Again, one of the, the crazy ideas of our chief, uh, chief scientist. Mayo Clinic did the, this initial study, and they were able to find, using our technology, some specific voice features that correlated in a very significant way with the, the presence of a specific heart condition. It's called the coronary artery disease, CAD. 
And when they came up with these uh, uh, conclusions and when I saw the, the results, I was saying, okay, now we have something that can really make a huge uh, difference in, uh, in the world. Really opened uh, the eyes for me and kind of almost gave purpose to what, uh, to what we've been doing. We definitely have something here. Wow. I <laughs> okay all right all right um this I mean this is beyond amazing uh <laughs> at this particular moment but the idea I mean you see this this is the stuff that's in science fiction movies is what you're talking about you're bringing it to science fact like in real life and that's got to carry a certain amount of weight and responsibility to some degree it actually carries a lot of uh, of responsibilities because when we were talking um, on like the initial use cases around understanding emotions and how it can be used in cases like you know call centers or um, like home solutions and and so on, this is one of these uh, things that you say okay it can really bring a lot of value and it can make changes. Um, but there is not that res- much of responsibility as w- when you have things that you are talking about in the in the health space, which is why, by the way, even though it's an area that we've been involved with for eight years now, we never talk about any of this publicly because I was really waiting to get like the stamp of approval for a leading from a leading institute like Mayo Clinic. But now that this is happening. Um, this is really a wow moment, and I just say, okay, imagine what this can do to, you know, healthcare, remote healthcare, rural areas where they don't have the the existence or a nearby kind of a medical center. Um, think of how much this can help elderly people where you know they are at home, and maybe they don't have someone that uh, they can talk to on on an on. This is the type of the type of thing that you can say, "Wow, we can really make a big, uh, big difference here." So there is a lot of responsibilities, and that's why we're taking it very, very seriously. Wow, I, I mean this, uh, this, this. I mean this has, I, you know, my. I'm just trying to figure out how many like different use cases. Uh, you know, as you're going through them, I'm just like, you, you're basically giving the, you know, things like Siri and Cortana, their personalities, but also making it useful, not just a cool feature so that it, it can actually aid and help us in ways that that would not be possible without technology. So with with all of that being said, how on earth do you like, how do you even go about developing a marketing strategy for something like this so that you can get it into all the right person's hands and make sure that we we know that this that this is out there it's amazing how technology is changing so many things i mean some of you out there are right now working on something that's really great or you just had an idea of for something that's really 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 great and it just has a long sales cycle it's going to take a while for it to come to market but here's the good news the good news is that if you invent something cool, eventually a use will be found for it. And if you can be patient, just continue to work it out, you have a shot at creating something that could be utterly transforming for so many people. It's just amazing being an entrepreneur and coming up with your own ideas. Your ideas are great, so go out there and use them to everyone's best benefit. With that being said, you know what? Let's just get right back to it. You actually touched on the the most important point in our whole go to market strategy, uh, which is solely based on partnerships. And you know, as a startup that has a very important technology, the way for you, for us, to bring it to market is really to find the right partners that can integrate our uh, product or our technology into their complete. Uh, complete solution because what we provide at the end of the day is a very important feature but it's a feature it's not a complete uh, a complete product and that's why what we do is a lot around finding the right uh, the right partners 
finding the right uh, customers that can integrate what we have in their complete solution and, and making sure that they would bring it to market. So it's mostly getting to getting on the radar and getting the attention of the of the right partners. Got it. Well, you know what? This is starting to sound like that handball school all over again. <laughs> uh, yeah, in a way, I didn't think about it this way, but yeah, it uh, it definitely does sound uh, uh, like closing a circle. <laughs> You're like, oh, I've done this before. It's just, you know, it, it, it's different. It's definitely more impact uh, for sure. So, so what does it take, I guess, then? If so let's pretend for a second that there's another entrepreneur who's listening, and they've got what they believe to be something that could be so universal. Uh, universally applicable to so many different people. What has it taken in terms of perseverance and, and challenges that that you guys have faced in order to get this far? Because it sounds like it, I'm on, I can only imagine it's been a lot. Perseverance is really, I think, the the most important synonym to to entrepreneurship. I see. Because as an entrepreneur, you really have to believe in. What uh, in what you do, you really all the time have to bring people on board, have people faith in what you do, in your vision, in where this whole thing is going. And what you really want to find along the way is partners, people, you know, to run with people that will help you and support you and give you and give you advice and can help you get to the right uh, the right people mostly in the face uh, of challenges you know sometimes things don't work the way you, uh, you want sometimes you're running very low on on cash and you have to look inside yourself and and see you know really develop this strong gut feeling and just trust your your instincts i guess that's uh, that's the best way i can describe it well you you bring up two things that i know a number of people are dealing with because you said there are times where you're going to be low in cash and there're going to be times where for lack of a better way of putting it partners and teammates aren't aren't exactly on board or they're leaving how how have you how did you grow comfortable or uh with the low cash scenario let's tackle that one first cuz a lot of people can't get over that 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 one feeling like i'm going to that you know i feel like i'm going to run out of money and the only thing they they can think about is i'm going to run out of money and they never think take the time to actually go solve the problem they just don't want to deal with that feeling anymore and then they quit how did you get through that so really, the, the cash flow thing, uh, I guess, is the most uh, detrimental factor. Because, you know, if a customer is not happy, you can improve things. And, you know, if you have bugs in the technology, you can fix it. Uh, but cash is really like blood to the brain. And if at some point there is not enough blood coming to the brain, the brain stop, uh, uh, stops operating. So that's, that's a very, very key, uh, key question. And, you know, for me, the group of investors that I had, uh, you know, gathered around me uh, through the, the process um, and basically at some key points, look them straight in the eyes and say, listen, guys, um, we need to decide if we believe in this. And if we are, then let's think together what's the best way. To, to deal with this because it's important to have the realization or to have the people around you where you realized you're not alone. Um, and I was very fortunate. I had a group of, uh, of investors, some of them, you know, like representing private investors. And I had great support uh, through the, the process. And I can tell you, definitely been a few cases where we've been very, very short on, on cash. And this is when you have to be the sharpest. I can tell you that actually one of my investors keeps saying that when you're low on cash, it actually helps you to crystallize your thoughts. So let's focus on really the things that, uh, that bring value. Let's find really a customer that can validate what, the, what we are doing and that may convince other investors to join. So, so I, I guess my thing is rather than making you like incompetent, this is where you really, really have to be sharp and very crystal clear and see what you really want to focus on. And then 
and just go and, and execute like crazy. I don't know if you know this is an extremely useful advice, but definitely it can really make you like very low or it can make you very sharp. So at least, and that was the way I was always looking at it. I want to make sure that if it doesn't work, at least I would be able to look back and say, I did the utmost maximum that, that I could have done. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, what about the people part? Because a lot of people have trouble with that part, too, in terms of maybe they start out with a team or team members start leaving and right in the middle of cash flow issues or all kinds of interesting things happen, obviously, to us as entrepreneurs as we're trying to bring something to market. How have you handled those situations? So, first of all, the the people issue is really, you know, right after having the, the enough cash. But I guess in a lot of cases, even before that, it's really the key the key elements because people are the ones that make uh, that make the difference. And also, people is where you invest most of your energy. And you know, if people that worked for you for one, two, three years, they decide to uh, uh, to leave, it's really a big uh, a big problem for uh, for the company. So, as the leader of the company, you really want to invest a lot. People always say, you know, it's all about the, the people, but it really is a lot about the people. Um, and about the way to handle it, I think it all comes down to uh, to leadership. If you are able to convince people about your vision, about your your dream, about the cause, why are you doing all of this, then they would join the ride. And you should also check because, you know, some of them can be so committed that they would say, OK, I'm really to forgive like two or three months of salary in order to help the, the, the company in exchange for, you know, additional equity or more compensation in the future and so on. So if you're being very honest and open with the people that you are working with and you say, this is the current problem, I'm doing my best to, to handle it. This is what our investors, our customers are saying, but I, I believe in this. So if you are with me, Let's see what we can do together in order to get there. Again, not say, no success is guaranteed here, but I think the key is to be very honest and to treat others the way you would like to be uh, to be treated. Um, mm. And that can take you very long distances. Yeah, uh, agreed. Agreed. Well, it's clearly obvious to me that you you've had a lot of experience in and various different areas of, of business. And, and that's great. So I, I've got a, what I think is going to be an interesting question for a number of people, because I want to, they, they're going to want to hear your answer. Because y you, you didn't start. I mean, yeah, you, you started the handball, but you were working uh, with other people's visions for, for from time to time, you know, when you were working, we'll say inside those other companies, what what gave you the, uh, I should say, courage to go do it on your own? I felt that I am ready. Mm. So, you know, when I'm getting now through tough times and I talk, you know, with my family, my, my brother, my, my wife, they all look to me smiling and they said, you know, what are you complaining about? You are asking for it. This is the life that you chose. So, you know, just uh, just deal with it. You you have you don't have the right to whine and, and moan about right uh, about this. So when I came to this thing with uh, with Beyond Verbal, I was I was ready. I understood the technology. I understood the impact uh, that, that it can have. And I had the feeling kind of really the, the fire in, in my belly, if you will, to say, I think I can make it I can make it happen. I can bring people on board. I can bring investors. I can convince customers. And it's something that I'm willing to give, you know, very good time, very good years of my life in order to, to make it happen. So you need to have the this fire in your belly uh, doing something that you really believe in. And, you know, you know, you don't know what you don't know, but you want to be in a situation that you feel that you have enough to start the, the, the journey and just give it, give it your best. I can tell you that when I started this, 
and I looked at my partner, looked them in the eyes, and I said, "Guys, I think we, I think we have it. I, I think that I can, I can make it happen." So I was ready for it. That's why I can't, I can't complain anymore. <laughs> no, we do lose that right once we've chosen it. So yes. now there's a number of people who that you know they've they've listened this far and they're highly interested in what you're doing and understanding more about what you have going on. What's going to be the best? next step for them to to reach out to you guys or what what to find out more i can tell you one fun way to experience uh, what uh, what we are doing we actually have an application that is available on android and on uh, apple devices and the application is called uh, moody's m double o d i e s and what this application does is once you install it, you activate it and you can start talking to the application. And after about 20 seconds, you would start getting analysis of your emotions or the emotions of the speaker. You can let your kids speak or your spouse or, you know, your friends. And it will do an analysis of the moods, the emotions of the speaker in real time. And that's mostly, it's not, like a commercial application it's a really fun way to experience what the, the technology on the emotions not on the health side but on the emotions what the, what it can do i can tell you that i'm using the application when i'm uh, preparing for you know important presentation in front of big audio uh, uh, audience instead of practicing just in front of the mirror i can practice in front of moody's and nice. i have like a, a talking mirror you know, nice. mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the best speaker of the of them all? <laughs> and so the application would tell me, listen, you start you sound tired, you sound nervous, or you sound, you know, excited and, and engaged. And this way I know if I'm ready to do these types of presentations. Wow. Sure, we have a lot of site and, and so on, but I think a fun way for the audience to really experience it is download Moody's and, and give it a try. I agreed. Agreed. I, I'm looking at it now. I actually downloaded it while you were talking because I was like, I want to do this. I can't wait. The, you know, I can. And, you know, on some on some level, I'm not sure we want uh, I want my wife to know about this because then she's like, you're when, there's no more. Um, I, I can't hide. It's like she's like, you're upset. I can't say no, I'm not. She'll be like, y- yes, you are. I can. You're, you're the the application is telling me you're upset. <laughs> It'll be fun. I could see this causing lots of trouble and also having lots of fun with it at the same time. Um, is there any other ways that we can help push this, help you make this this happen for you guys? I think that because most of the work that uh, that we are doing is really with partners, yeah. Then you know a lot of it is a lot more uh, strategic business development. What I can tell you specifically about Moody's is that once you are working with this, we actually give you the user the ability to vote on whether you agree with our analysis or not. And this is helping a lot because this all goes completely anonymously and so on, but goes into the algorithm and into the machine learning process and helps improve the uh, the algorithm. So the best way to help is use, use Moody's and vote. Say if you agree <laughs> or disagree, and this can really help improve the, the, the algorithm down the road. Indeed, indeed. Totally appreciate that a lot. So as we wind down here, I I have a question for you because I I definitely want to hear your answer. And uh, let's so let's pretend for a moment, you all that we have, you know, someone listening who's who thinks they want to be an entrepreneur, they're standing in front of that superhero outfit store, they're ready to pick out their uniform and, and go to work and make it happen. But at the same time, as they're thinking all these big thoughts, that there's this other voice that exists in the back of their mind. And I know you know this voice. I know you've done battle with it. It's that voice that comes up from time to time to tell us what we can't do, uh, how it's not going to work, and who are you to think that you could do so- something so great and no one's going to buy it and all this other stuff. And for some people, they're even related to that voice. So my, my question to you is as follows. If that person who's ready to get started in their own entrepreneurial journey was standing in front of you and you knew that they would actually follow through, 
they would actually do what you said, and they would do so in the next 24 to 48 hours, what would you suggest that they do? So I think that listening to this voice is very important before you embark on the journey because this voice is going to pop up again and again at all the wrong places, all the tough <laughs> junctions, all the, the hard moments that you are going to face. And you need to be very, very clear um, and you need to address this voice early on. So you can decide, listen, I'm going to take this voice, put this in, in a box because I've addressed all these, uh, these questions um, and I'm ready to, uh, uh, to go for it. And I won't have regrets. The most important thing is because, you know, if it won't work after two years, hey, why, why didn't I listen to, to this voice? And I think that the way to do it is to say, to look at it as an adventure. And something that you know, even if it doesn't, uh, if it even if it doesn't work out, I still gave it a try, and I didn't give up, and I went after my uh, my dreams. So look yeah. deep inside, listen to all the naysayers, but then once you listen to all of them, you have to look inside and say, "Am I ready?" Um, and I think the journey uh, uh, worth it because then you're following your own dream. It doesn't have to be a huge dream. You know, when I did this uh, a handball uh, school for kids, it wasn't a huge dream, but it was something that I owned. I So, you know, I think that it can be something small or something big. You have to listen to the voice and to say, I'm ready. Listen, guy, I'm ready to fight you and I'm going to make it happen. And and follow your guts. That's I, I I think the best advice that I can I can give. Excellent and well said. I definitely want to uh, congratulate you on all the I can only imagine long nights, hard work, etc. That you guys have been doing, and uh, I definitely appreciate you taking the time to to share your, your your product, your information, the technology, just the journey, and your knowledge, your insight, and your wisdom here with us today, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I enjoyed it a lot. And, you know, if some listeners in the audience would embark on their own journey to become entrepreneurs, like I said, big or small, then, you know, if we were able to help in this process, then we definitely did something right. So I'm, I'm very happy with the opportunity. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. Well, the least you can do is download the Moody's app because I've already downloaded it and I'm going to have some fun with it. But more importantly, you know you'll be contributing to the cause and you know like I know that you want your technology to get better, be better, and help us more and more. So why not? Cost nothing and you are already listening on the mobile device that has the ability to download it. You know how I know? Because you're listening to my voice. <laughs> and that's exactly what I want you to do is to go download it because you never know what you just might learn about yourself. And I love the application of being able to pr practice in front of it so that you can know what kind of emotions you're projecting in your voice. So I think that's just amazing. Anyway, it's been fun talking to you guys today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time. <laughs> <laughs> 